Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Jones, the parent liaison at Creekside High School. Again, I would like to welcome you to this event. This event is our technology night. We hope that you have, will enjoy what we have put together for you. We ask that you put a friendly hello in the chat. If you don't know where your chat is, your chat is found at the bottom of your screen. Click on chat and you can just type in a friendly hello, good evening, whatever you would like to say to us. Also at the end of this event, we will have question and answer period. So you will be able to ask any questions and we will answer them for you at the end of the event. Also at the end of this event, there will be a survey, a survey in which we will ask you to click on that link and complete the survey for us. Tonight, this event is sponsored for me by the lovely Ms. Cheryl Royal and Ms. Alicia Jordan. We hope you enjoy this event. And now I turn it over to Ms. Cheryl Royal. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. I promise I won't hold you long. I have um, gone in and condensed this presentation as much as possible, but just wanted to give you a few tips about internet safety. I know that our students are, uh, they spend a lot of time online. And um, tonight we just wanted to talk about a few things that can help keep them safe and how you as parents and guardians can serve as role models for our students and our kids and our children to make sure that they stay, 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 stay safe online. So tonight we want to talk about protecting the future of your family and educating our teens on appropriate boundaries to help keep them safe. And as we're going through this, if you have any questions or any related to what we're talking about tonight, um, you can drop those in the chat, as Ms. Jones said, and we will get your questions at the very end. All right. So I just wanted to start first with the why. Why are we here? Why are you here on a Tuesday night when there's so many things that you could be doing? Um, so many places you could be, you could be. Um, things I know that you have on your uh, to-do list, but you're here. And so your why, your why is we know that we want at the end for our kids to all be able to walk across that stage and get that diploma. And following that, whether they go to college or trade school, whether they decide to be an entrepreneur, um, they might decide that they want to go on and go to graduate school, um, get married one day and be an amazing parent, just as you all are for being here tonight and give you those wonderful grandchildren sometime off in the far future. And also just making sure that, you know, that they're living a healthy lifestyle and passing on the legacy of family. So we know that that's our why. That's, that's, that's all of our why. So with that being said, what is it that we can do as parents? What is it that we as Creekside can do? What is it that we as a community can do to ensure that that happens. And so what we can do is to get informed. So we wanna make sure that we inform our parents and our students. And we want to make sure that we teach our students to become responsible digital citizenships. So we know that um, our kids are digital natives. I mean, they, 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 they live online whether it's for school, whether it's for socialization, whether it's entertainment, um, researching, finding information, they live online. And we wanna make sure that just as our parents um, made sure that we were safe, we wanna make sure that we keep our students safe. So um, when we look at the use of um, the internet for adults, so as adults primarily, we use it to communicate um, we used to shop. Um, I've, since the pandemic has started, I found out about uh, this wonderful thing called Shipped. And I go in and I, you know, do my grocery shopping online. So, you know, that's been very, very convenient. Um, if you're like me, you probably spent too much money during the pandemic on that phone, ordering things. <laughs> and so we use it a lot for shopping. Um, those of us that are good use it for financial management. I'm still trying to get there one day. And uh, we use it to get our news. I get a lot of my news online. Um, if you are in the, the business of buying something, whether it's a car, a furniture, or whatever, we go online and we research. And also we use it for entertainment. 
Um, we use it to watch videos, movies, um, games, listen to our music as we are exercising. So those are some things that as adults that we primarily use the internet for. Now we're gonna look at that landscape internet for our students. And there's difference just a little bit from ours. So we look at theirs, they use it primarily for communicating. They're texting, they're um, instant messaging, emailing, you know, of course, you know, they're engaging in social media. They use it for entertainment, um, games, videos, mu music. Um, also to research and do homework and, and they go to study sites on there as well. So this information that I have here is um, a couple years old. And so I would, there's something that I want to add to this. Um, and I'm going to ask if you can just very, just for a moment, just unmute your mic. I want you to look at the screen that I have. And it shows us that YouTube, Instagram, and Snapchat are the most popular online platforms among teens. So this was in 2018. So can anybody tell me what's another one that's not on here, but our kids utilize a lot? Uh, I don't, is it, it's not that space thing, is it space? No, it starts with a T. TikTok. TikTok, yes. TikTok. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's TikTok. So our kids use TikTok a lot. Um, and I've seen a few TikTok um, videos that people might post on Facebook, but it's, that's another one that would be added to this that our kids use a lot. So as we look at this picture, I'm sure we've all been guilty of this, whether it's at our dinner table at the house, whether it's at a restaurant, um, we're all using our phones, you know, we're all engaged in phone one or another. So when we look at the research, research shows us that 3.5 billion social media users are online every single day. And that's about 45% of the population. You might as well say about 50% of the population. And that's a lot. That's a huge number. So with that being said, um, if we look at the top five internet dangers for our kids, the first one is inappropriate content. We know that that can involve pornography, um, content focused on violence or hate propaganda. Cyberbullying is a big one. Um, bullying amongst peers. So I know during my time, bullying was done face to face. Um, but now it can be done um, in cyberspace. And we have to be mindful of the fact that it's there um, because just because it's not face to face does not make it any less powerful. Um, they can encounter predators online in social networking sites and chat rooms. Also data theft, um, stolen passwords, social security numbers, credit card numbers, and other financial information and malicious software um, called known as mildware. So, you know, those are just the top five. There are others, but these are things that we have to make sure that we help our kids to make sure that they don't get entangled with. A forensic look at um, so I'm just going to highlight one of these today out of that top five. And the one that I'm going to highlight is cyberbullying. So um, with cyberbullying, so cyberbullying is really an umbrella. And underneath that umbrella, there are different types of cyberbullying. So one we have is outing and trickery. And that is when someone shares someone's secret or embarrassing information, um, whether it be through text or online images. Uh -huh. The other one is exclusion. Um, again, this is one of those things I'm that... I'm just devastated. All my stuff gone. That yeah, person, I, 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 but exclusion I, I, is when someone intends you to be able to take part in it. Just a buddy Wait, list. I can't hear. Um, the next one is cyber stalking. Are you talking, baby? What's going on? Okay, hurry and come on in. You just you can keep the phone. I'll leave the phone on. You can hear. The next one is cyber stalking. So, with cyber stalking, is repeatedly sending someone unwanted messages that may include threats of harm or intimidation. And oftentimes we see cyber stalking, oftentimes, you know, um, in male female relationships. Another one is flaming. And this one was new to me because I had not heard of this one, but flaming are online fights where people use electronic messages with inappropriate language. Um, harassment, you know, a person is sending offensive 
um, rude and insulting messages. Uh, denigration is sending or posting gossip or rumors about a person. Again, that's something that um, in my time was done, you know, face to face, but now it's something that takes place in cyberspace. And we know once it's in cyberspace, it's there forever. It doesn't go away. And then impersonation, impersonation, posing to be someone else and making them look bad. So those are just a um, few types of cyberbullying that um, kids can be confronted with. So what I did was I found an actual website that actually showed real cyberbullying incidents. And so I just pulled these four. So some real cyber incident, cyber bullying incidents that have taken place um, is where people use instant messages and claim that a student had a contagious disease. And we know right now that's something that could actually happen because we know that we are in the midst of a pandemic. And we know that that would be something that would be very hurtful if someone, you know, said, oh, this person has you know, A, B, or C and, and it didn't happen and they started to spread that around. Um, could be very hurtful, you know, to a child or anyone else. Um, another real-life cyberbullying incident um, is when cell phones are used to take pictures of kids in locker rooms, um, in bathrooms. Um, it can be done anywhere. It can be done if they're out at the mall. It can be done um, if they're at the store. Um, it can happen any place. Another one is that people have done is students' faces being morphed onto pornographic photos. Um, and then the, another one was websites that take polls about um, people, you know, who's the ugliest person, who's the fattest person, um, things that would be very hurtful. So these are some actual cyberbullying incidents that have taken place um, across our country. So um, with that being said, one of the things that when we, we came together and we were talking about this presentation, we wanted to make sure that parents were aware and students were aware of if someone airdrops information to you, they airdrop a video to you, um, and you're not certain of what it is, sometimes it's not a great idea to open that. Because sometimes if you open it and it's something inappropriate, then that student is then involved. And then that student gets, you know, can possibly get caught up in the discipline cycle, you know, once they start investigating. And so you want to be, you know, beware of videos sharing information um, that someone has shared with, with, with you that might be inappropriate. Okay. Um, so if your child or even you as an adult find yourself in a situation where you are being cyber bullied, um, you want to make sure that you don't respond to those messages and don't comment because oftentimes when you respond, it adds fuel to the fire. Um, so that's, that's, that's the first step. And then the next step would be always make sure that you save the evidence or the emails and, or text messages, screenshot it if you need to, um, in case you need to take that information and go to the authorities with it. Um, if harassment is happening via email or social networking sites, instant messaging, chat work, um, chat rooms, excuse me, um, see if there's a way that you can block that person from access to your child's phone. Um, also, check out phone features that would allow you to, to, to block that person's number. And then you can also always go and make a report on the cyber tip line, or you can reach out to your local law enforcement agency. Okay. Um, thing is, when you're using social media, it's important to take a look at your personal profile and what those settings look like. So I know for me, over the summer, I recently went in and realized that there were some things on my social media um, site that I needed to um, go in and change those settings on there. Just because nothing had happened, but just out of an overabundance of caution, I went in and made sure that um, my privacy settings were such that people that were not my friends could not see what was on my page. Not that anything bad is on my page, but you know, there's so many incidents where people will take your picture from your page and, and make fake pages. Uh, I'm sure if any of you are on Facebook that you've probably gotten an email at some point during the time that you've been on Facebook, someone might say, hey, I got a, a, a friend request from you. 
or I keep getting a friend request from you. Um, and, you know, and your picture is on it. So, you know, you have to be, be careful of that. So I know I went in and I made my account private. Um, also, I went in and I took off anything that, you know, like the, the year that I was born, um, just anything that anybody could take and use to build um, a background for another person. Parents, you always want to make sure that for your children that you pre-approve pictures that they are putting up on sites um, because it's, it could possibly be um, something that could be inappropriate or it could be something um, that maybe just, just does not need to be shared. And you want to remind your child not to post email addresses or cell phone numbers, never share passwords, ever, 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 and also not to respond to any emails requesting personal information, um, or if emails look suspicious. I had someone, um, a very, I, I got an email about two weeks ago at, on my work email saying, it was one of my friends saying, hey, uh, I got to go out of town. I forgot to get my nephew a gift. Do you think you could go and get him a gift and I'll pick it up from you when I get back? And I was like, this is odd. And then I thought about it some more and I was like, but she doesn't have a nephew. And so as I started thinking about it, I realized like, this is, this is, this is fake. And so when I called my friend, I told her what happened. She said she had gotten about 20 calls from friends saying that someone had actually, that they, you know, that they wanted this birthday gift. So somehow someone had hacked into her email and gotten into her contacts and sent out this email from her contacts. So uh, we want to be mindful of that. Also, Discuss how to keep screen names and email addresses kind of gender neutral, if possible. Um, it's because you don't want to give too much information away about your identity. Because there's just so much that um, people can do to steal your identity. Also, um, encourage your child to tell you right away if anything happens online that bothers them, that frightens him or her, or you know anything that might make them uncomfortable. And I think last but definitely not least, make sure that they understand the difference between friends and cyber friends. Because we might have people that we're friends with online, but that's not a friend that you would per se communicate personal information with. All right, um, we're getting near the end because like I said, I don't wanna hold you. I know you have a lot of things to do. I just wanted to talk about social media one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so as we know with our youth, Many of our younger, um, our youth do not use Facebook the way that they used to use Facebook. They're kind of veering away from that. So if you would like to see um, or get an idea of apps that students are gravitating towards, um, you can go in and click on this site. You can also go to yourself to Common Sense Media. Hope it comes up. And it just gives you a listing of um, popular apps that students are currently using. John, a second. Can you guys see this article here? Dr. Jordan and Ms. Jones, can you see this article? No, ma'am. We can only see where you, um, the slide with the Facebook use declining no. with you. Hold on, let me see if I can do a new share. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, can you see it now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right, so let me make this a little bigger. So um, I'm not going to walk you through this page, but I wanted to, wanted to know that this is here. So if you ever get a chance, I want you to go to Common Sense Media, and it's free for parents and educators and for advocates. And there is a section here um, that says parents need to know, which is where this article came from. This particular article, oops, excuse me, this particular article, I've got my screen too big, hold on, is the article that I was referencing. And it talks about 18 social media apps that kids are using right now, um, such as, such as, um, Instagram, those are the TikTok videos, Tumblr, Twitter, house party group video chat, um, live me. 
they have 18 and they have them divided by category um, so that you can see you know the apps that are out there and available and these apps oftentimes are free and your kids are able to download these on their phones but I think it's a good idea for parents to know what these apps are capable of doing and um, so it, you can you know just be aware of, of, of things that you know your your child could possibly um, have access to. Like you, as I said before, when you're on this site for um, Common Sense Media, if you go here to Parents Need to Know, they have all sorts of videos here over all types of categories. They have articles, videos, they have frequently asked questions. You can search this by topic as you see here. And you can also search by age. So these are just some of them. How can I use social media to teach my kid empathy? Um, how much screen time is okay for my kids? Um, is it safe to post pictures of my kid online? So there are numerous um, articles and videos here that parents can go on and look at and see um, to give you that extra layer of support when it comes to making sure that you are aware of the things that your child is doing online as well as, well as how you can serve as that role model for your child. So let me see if I can get back to my other screen. Okay. Oops, hold on. Can you guys see my PowerPoint now? <laughs> Are you guys able to see my PowerPoint? Yes, yes ma'am. on it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm here. And so we're getting near the end. So with everything that I've just shared, um, we still have, it's still great. Um, you can still be a good online role model for your And so I wanted to um, just tell you some good things about because it's not all bad because we all use social media in one form or another. Um, it does help to strengthen friendships. It offers a sense of belonging to not just our kids, but to us, and it provides support. It also helps them express themselves, and it also exposes them to worldwide issues. And we've seen that this summer um, and, and this fall with um, the election, we've seen that with um, things that occurred um, over this past year and, you know, people were able to get involved because of the things that they might have seen on social media uh, were able to stay or be as safe as possible because we get tips and, 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 and strategies for how to stay safe during this pandemic. So um, social media is not all bad. There are good things to it. But one of the main things that you can do to um, help your kids be great digital citizens is to make sure that your students understand the importance of um, minding proper copyright laws. Um, so, you know, we know when we talk about copyright, we're talking about when someone has an exclusive legal right to something that they've created, that they've published, printed, performed, recorded, filmed. We know that um, that person has exclusive rights to that. And we have to make sure that students understand that if someone else has exclusive rights to that, that there is a process that they go through in order to get permission to utilize that person's work. So what I did was I have a few questions here and I'm also gonna drop in a link to this in the, um, um, in the chat so that you can go back and reference it. So, you know, what types of work are subject to copyright? And, um, you know, if a person creates an original work um, that can be music, that can be um, print. Um, there are different types of things that are under that big umbrella of copyright. I like to think 
copyright as an umbrella. And, um, and so that copyright gives that person ownership of what he or she has created. So another thing, a question that might come up is, is it possible to use a copyright protected work without infringing? And it is. So like when students write um, an essay, one of the big things that we know our English teachers always say is to make sure that you cite your Make sure that you know you give credit to the person that um, came up with that idea or came up with that thought, because we know that if they don't do that, we know that if they just um, copy and paste something and then inject it into their work, then we know that that's an act of what? What is that? It starts with a P. Plagiarism. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Pollock. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Pollock is on the line. <laughs> um, thank you for coming, Principal Pollock. I know you I know you're going between two meetings, so we appreciate that. Um also um going back to we also we, we talked about one of the things I wanted to make sure that I mentioned when we talk about what types of work are subject to copyright. So for instance, I'm sure that you know, anytime we a lot of times you might see something on social media and a person might say, Well, you know, um, I don't have the right to rights to this music, but I'm gonna use it anyway. So that's an example of a person using something without getting permission from the person that actually created the work. Um, also, when we think about when we're in the midst of the pandemic and we're doing a lot of our meetings online. So we know that you can go, there are certain sites that you can go to and you can get Zoom backgrounds. Um, if you're on Teams, you can get backgrounds for that. But if I were to take a picture of the Mona Lisa and spread that across and make that my background, and I've not gotten permission from that for that, then that would also be an example of not making sure that, uh, that I did not get the owner's permission to do that. Now, if I just have a picture of the Mona Lisa in my background, that's fine. But when I take that picture of the Mona Lisa and I make it my background and I've not gotten permission, then I'm not following the proper um, copyright laws. So the things that they can do in order to make sure that they are following guidelines is to make sure that they give credit to the copyright owner. Um, also making sure that you're not getting something and, and using it to make a profit off of it without getting permission. Um, if you are charged for a copy of the content in question, so we need to make sure that um, you look at look look very closely to make sure um, that 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 person has permission. Also, um, looking to see if there are similar content that appear elsewhere on the internet. So sometimes a person might have um, something that looks very close, but it's not quite the same thing. But it is meant to mimic that. We know that you know you are not able to do that without getting um, sole permission. Um, I'm not going to read all of these to you. I'm going to let you read through them pretty, for yourself. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, I know that there are certain um, we don't really use a lot of videos right now, um, old-fashioned videos like we used to use back in the day. But I know that um, there were certain things that we could record, and there is a time span on how long you can actually keep those recordings. And also it's a number, there was a limited number of people that we could show something to because um, that was a part of the copyright. So um, just sharing this information with your students would help them a lot. We know that um, this would help a lot of our students in their English language arts courses um, so that to make sure that they are covering themselves. And if you have more questions about it, you can also go online to Common Sense Media and that information is there as well. So um, one question um, that someone asked is, what is the difference between a copyright and a trademark? Um, and what about patents? So when we think about um, copyright, we're thinking about intellectual properties. When we think about trademarks, we think about one of the, the trademarks that come to my mind is the Nike logo. So we know that you know, you're not supposed to take a person's logo or motto and transfer it to something that you have to use for profit without getting permission. So we have to make sure because those things are protected. Um, 
what's the difference between copyright and privacy? So um, they had a really good example here. And it says that, for, if, for example, if your friend took a picture of you, um, so let's just say Dr. Jordan took a picture of me, the picture belongs to Dr. Jordan because she took the picture. Although I am in the picture, the picture still belongs to her. If I decide to take that picture and I decide to upload that picture or video or image um, without her permission, it is at that point that I have violated um, that copyright on her end. But if she did not get permission from me to take the picture, then that becomes a, a privacy issue. Um, and I think that's something that I see a lot on Facebook. Oftentimes, there was a, um, one of my friends posted something that was hilarious on Facebook, and I think I went back a few days later to find it to show to someone else, and it was gone. And there was a little message there saying that the person did not have the right to, um, didn't have the right, not that she didn't have the right to post it, but the person that did the video didn't have the right or the ownership of the content that was in the video. So we, we see a lot of that in social media. So again, I'm gonna put all of that information, I'm gonna drop that in the chat box so that you can go back and reference it. And the information, um, there's a lot more information, but I just kind of put the highlights in there about um, copyright. So at this time, if there were any questions about anything that I talked about, um, who's, who's monitoring the chat? Jordan or Jones? I can monitor the chat. This is Jordan. Okay. Did we have any questions? No, I didn't see any questions. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Jones. And um, as I said before, I didn't want to hold you, so I tried to condense it as much as possible because I know you guys have a lot on your plate. Um, have a lot on your to-do list, but I thank you so much for coming out and joining us tonight. And I hope that you were able to get something that you could take away and use and share so that we can ensure that our students um, are the best digital citizens that they can ever be. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you for coming out tonight. That was awesome, Ms. Royal. Thank you, Ms. Royal. That was a great job. I hope everyone enjoyed this workshop that we had tonight on technology. At this time, I placed the link for the survey in the chat. I hope that you can see it because at first I could see everyone's message. Now I can't see anyone's message, but I hope that you can see the link that I put into the chat asking you to complete the survey. And I'm going to stay on a little bit longer in case anyone have any questions. But if Dr. Jordan or Ms. Royal or Mr. Pollock has anything else to say this will end our meeting i just ask that you please complete the survey thank you parents family friends for joining us oh you it, it says you got five new messages in there dr jordan do you see them oh no because that's um everyone's saying thank you oh okay um, uh uh one person said they didn't see the link and and I don't know, because I can't see anybody else's messages, but the link. Do you see it, Dr. Jordan? I did see the link. Hmm. I'll try um, it again. That was from uh, Miss Scott. She said, I don't see the link. So oh. um, it's right above Miss Scott uh, from Jennifer Jones. It was sent at 619. It's a, it's a long link, so it may not look. Uh, it's a long link, but if you click on it, it'll bring up the survey. Oh, and one person said the link from the presenter. Miss uh, Miss Royal, were you going to attach a link? Yes, I'm doing that right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And Ms. also remember, also remember when you fill out the survey, it's going to ask a question. This is technology night. So click on you're at the event for technology night. night. Thank you. <coughs>
So since I don't see any more questions or um, see anyone um, doing anything else, I'm going to stop the recording now. No, 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 no. Wait, let me, I want to put this on there before you're done. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put this on there before you're done. Hold on a okay. second. Okay, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay, so I just put it on. You know, this is my first time using Zoom. I'm so used I to see. You did an awesome job. What? A great you know, job. I do see your um your link, Miss your Miss Royal. Copyright okay. privacy. Yes. Okay. Okay. And Jordan, do I need to drop the email in there? Yes, drop the email in I'm there. The email. I mean, not the email, the um, PowerPoint. Um, no, ma'am. The PowerPoint don't need to go into the link. Okay. The PowerPoint would go on the website. Mr. Pollock will put that on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Well, thank you all. Along with thank the recording. You. Thank you, everyone. I can stop the recording now. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay.